As we delve into inferential statistics, we'll be working with analyzing pattern and the average nearest neighbor index. And essentially, I'm looking at two points, two sets of points here. You can see a set of points here in the top, and these are deer vehicle collisions for Guilford County versus deer vehicle collisions for Randolph County. And essentially, we're going to create two descriptive metrics to describe the entire data set to look at the level of clustering, randomness, or dispersion for each of these particular points. Now, when I look at my spatial statistical tools and then click on analyzing patterns, you can see it calculates the nearest neighbor based on the average distance from each feature to the nearest neighbor. And all it's going to do is compare it to a random distribution. And so all it's going to be is a ratio. So when we look at the result, it'll actually be a ratio. Now, to calculate this ratio, we have a formula here. It's going to be 0.5 divided by the square root of n over a, the number of points, divided by the actual area itself. And so we're going to run these two tools, uh, this tool for two different sets of data, and see which one of them are going to be the most clustered, least clustered, random, and dispersed, because to me, they just look like a bunch of points there. Now, real quick, we're going to look at some information here for Randolph County. You can see there's 450 individual points here. For Guilford County, I believe we have about 480 points. And so we have about the same number of points here. So it's difficult for me to calculate density or look at raw numbers because there's different numbers for each of these. And Randolph County is going to be slightly bit bigger than Guilford County. So of course the density is going to be more or should be more based on our particular calculations. And so we want to look at the pattern of clustering. How clustered is the Guilford County versus Randolph County? And this, these tools are great ways to explore this. Now, I'm going to run this tool here. And while I'm at view, I'm going to click on Contents and Geoprocessing. OK. So I'm going to click on Average Nearest Neighbor. And my input feature is going to be my Randolph deer collisions. I'm going to generate a report. And so, like I said before, we're going to calculate a ratio. And this ratio is just going to look at the difference or the ratio of the expected versus the observed. So essentially for each of these points here, and I can zoom into these points here, it's going to do 480 individual calculations. For, so for this particular point, it's going to calculate the distance between this point and its nearest neighbor, which looks like this one here. It's going to get this other point, calculate the distance between this point and its nearest neighbor, which may be this one here. And it's going to do this for every single point and then to compare it to a hypothetical random set of points to see if it's dispersed, random, or clustered. So lower than those values, around those values, or higher than those values with statistical significance. And then it's going to do the same exact thing for Randolph County. So it's going to look at this point and the distance between its nearest neighbor versus another point and another point. Because you can imagine for a random set of points, it'll be far in some cases and close in other cases. So I'm going to generate this report and I'm going to run it. Me personally, I like looking at the reports here. And so I saved it in my working folder here. And so when I run this, when I run this for Randolph County, my deer vehicle collision, see what it gives me. It gives me an observed mean distance of 1066.38 meters. The expected distance is 1072. And so the ratio of the observed, what it saw, what it calculated versus the expected is 0.99. So it's very, very close based on this formula. So the expected mean distance for a random set of points is going to be 0.5 divided by the square root of n over a. And so the expected set of points here is going to be 0.5, this, this number right here, 0.5 divided by, I believe it was 450, divided by the area in square kilometers, or I did it in square miles and I just converted it. But the nearest neighbor index is 0.99. This gives me a z-score of negative 0.24 and a p-value of 0.806.
And basically, with this p-value right here, it tells us with this z-score, the pattern does not appear to be significantly different than random. And so for Randolph County, it looks like our deer vehicle collisions are largely going to be random in nature. Now let's look at the next one. This time we're going to run the same thing. We're going to run Guilford Deer Collisions. We're going to generate a report. And now we're going to run it again. Okay, so you can see nearest neighbor index 0.61, z-scores. What do we know about z-scores that are really, really high and really, really low? They are statistically significant. So now I'm going to run it again. And you can see that all right, 1,892 in this case feet. Looks like the projection of my data were slightly different. 3,075, 1892 divided by 3,075 equals 0.16. So you can see how different the observed distance that it calculated versus the expected distance it was. So it's got a nearest neighbor ratio that converts to a z-score, which is going to be really, really far in this direction. And so you can see, it says here, with the z-score, there is less than 1% likelihood that this clustered pattern could be the result of chance. And so our results basically tell us that this top data, top data set is clustered, the bottom one is random. And so this is just one set of inferential statistics that essentially tell us how clustered or how random a particular data set is using a particular formula. We've talked about this formula in class. The expected is going to be 0.5 divided by the square root of n over a, the number of points divided by the total, total area if you do want to you know, integrate that in. And I'll show this really, uh, really quickly. And so this is the this is the formula that we do have here. Okay. So it calculates the distance, and then it calculates this formula, and essentially it looks at the ratio between the two. Now we know how to get the n. We know how to get the a. We just saw the n, and we can get the a from these if we want to calculate these by hand. So in conclusion, this is a really short introduction to average nearest neighbor analysis, which returns a, a global statistics that describes the entire data set, where that we can see this blue set of points here is much more clustered than the brown or uh, orange set at the bottom.